Hello, Dan Green here. It's been quite a while since my last video. Uh, if you happen to subscribe to my channel, you may think I'd just completely quit making them. It wasn't really the plan to go this long. I mentioned that I wanted to make a video about um, my uh, nightstand gun case, gun vault, whatever you want to call it. Uh, gun, it's not really a safe, but where I keep my pistol by my nightstand. And because my old one, this is my old uh, case had stopped working. And I'm going to talk about that for a minute. And I was in the search for a new one and I thought I'd make a little video about uh, just sharing which one I had chosen and how it was working out for me. And then time went by and went by and went by and I never made the video. So I'm making it today and I actually have plans for another video in the next few days uh, that I will mention at the end. So. Let me just start back by uh, kind of setting the stage for why I came to need a new nightstand case. And I'll say, first off, the, the purpose of these cases for me is to keep them out of people's hands that are in my house that I don't want them to have access to, namely my grandchildren or any friends they may have over. Uh, these are not necessarily to prevent theft of the firearm. You can see they're small. It'd just be easy to pick this up and walk out the house, walk out of the house with it. They do come with a cable that you can attach to something to prevent theft, but that's not really why I have these and I never bothered with the cables. I have these so that um, children who may be here at the house uh, cannot access the firearms. Um, and, and that's really the only purpose for them. I want something that's easy for me to get into when I want to get into it, but the priority is not speed of me getting in, the priority is keeping them out because let's just be real, I don't know where you live, and I don't know how the, what the crime rate is where you are, but here in my neighborhood, I've lived in the particular neighborhood I'm in now for five years, six, five years or so, no, I, Anyway, six, six years, something like that. And the entire time I've been here, I'm not aware of anyone's house getting broken into and especially anyone's house getting broken into it while they're at home. I think the chances of that happening to me are slim. Certainly possible, but not very likely. And I think that's the case for most Americans, uh, depending on the neighborhood you live in, um, of course, it may be different for you, but that neighborhood I lived in before this one, I lived in that neighborhood for quite a few years. And again, wasn't aware of any break-ins in any houses, um, especially when anybody was home. I lived in California outside of Los Angeles for a year when I was in the military. And we did have a house broken into down the street from us but it was during the day when the robbers knew that no one was home. It was actually quite brazen. They pulled up a moving van and unloaded the entire contents of the house. It was at the end of a cul-de-sac and you really couldn't see that house from the rest of the street very well. And they must have just known what they were doing because the family, the, the husband and wife got home after the day of work to a, a basically empty house. But back to the situation that these block boxes address for me, uh, it's not to prevent theft, it's, it's, it's to prevent access by someone that I'm afraid might hurt themselves or someone else if, if they had access to the firearm. And it's also, uh, it, it is something that in the very unlikely chance that the house is broken into that I would be able to access quickly. So I had this, it's made by Gun Vault. I used it for many years. It's got a little keypad on the top of it where you put your fingers down into these screws and you can do this at, in the dark. You don't have to be able to see anything and you can press the combination into the keypad and it pops open. Of course, to have that, you have a battery inside and um, I had it for quite a few years and I'd replaced the battery a couple of times and when you replace the battery, I didn't have any difficulty resetting the combination and everything was fine. However, the last time the battery went dead, 
Um, that was not the case. I replaced the battery, went to reset the combination, could not get it to take a combination, tried the old combination, the old combination did not work. I tried what I thought was probably the default combination, I couldn't get that to work. So the bottom line is I couldn't get any combinations to work. I looked up the directions online to make sure I was doing it properly. I was, I, continue, I tried it several more times. I could not get this to relearn a combination. And so the only way I had to lock it was, and unlock it was with the key. And I did that for a while and uh, continued to use it. Um, but I decided that I didn't want to continue to use the key. I wanted to be able to, and like I said, I think it's unlikely, but in the chance that I needed to access the firearm quickly, I didn't want to have to get the key out, and undo the undo the lockbox, especially if I was trying to do it in the dark, it just would have been more difficult. So I started looking for um, something to replace this with. And because of, the malfunction of the keypad, I started thinking I wanted one that wasn't electronic. And Fort Knox, there's a brand named Fort Knox and they make some very high quality safes of all types and sizes. And they make small ones for pistols uh, for this purpose. And they are completely mechanical. They don't use uh, batteries. There's no electronics in them. It's, it's a mechanical lock and they have extremely good ratings online. And I was very tempted and almost bought one of those. The ones I was looking at run about $300. They say that $299 on sale. Well, every time I've looked at them, they've been $299 on sale. So it seems like that must be their almost permanent price. I think they're like $345 otherwise. By the way, this one cost about um, $199. Um, you can still purchase it. It's made by a company called Gun Vault. And I was very happy with it for a long time. And I could have bought another one, but I was frustrated because I could, it's not working anymore and I couldn't figure out how to make it work. And so I thought I'm gonna try something else. But in fairness to this, I've had it for, I don't know how many years, a lot of years, uh, 10 years or so, I, I'm guessing, but a long time. I've had it for a good while. When I was, Looking, I came across this as well, and this is called LifePod 2.0, and it also runs about $199, and it is very electronic. You, it's got an electronic keypad that's touch sensitive, and these you actually press down. This you just touch, and, which makes me even more nervous, to be honest with you, about how reliable and, and and it's sturdy it's going to be over the lifetime. But it also has the fingerprint uh, unlock mechanism. And that really appealed to me as long as it works. I wasn't sure it would work because I don't know why, but the ridges on my fingerprints are very slight. And I've had to be fingerprinted a number of times for background checks and uh, security clearances and things of that nature. And it was very hard for people to get good prints from me because the the, the ridges on, on my fingers are just almost worn down. But they, uh, so I wasn't sure that this would work, but I ordered it anyway and and, and it's worked fine. I, I, I programmed in my, fing, my fingerprints and I've had absolutely no issues with it. And it cost $1.99 just like this one. There's a, Online, when I looked around, they were the exact same price. You can see the sizes are very similar. Uh, I think the LiPod, I've not measured them and tried to come up with any volume or anything like that, but it just looks a little bit larger. It has, it's probably, you can see it in the video, it's got a little light and you can turn that off and on if you don't want the light. It's very versatile. It comes with this little tray inside that I don't use, but if, if you wanted to use it, it, and it comes with some straps, so you can strap things to this tray so they're not sliding around if you wanted to put your knife in here. And I think the thought behind all of that is if you're tra traveling with this, if you're taking it places and, and you have this in your luggage or whatever, 
and you put your things in it and you don't want them sliding around. The tray does limit what, what will fit under it. Now, this eggshell uh, pad comes out as well. So you can, you can leave that in for extra padding or you could remove it and then possibly fit a pistol under that. And that really doesn't fit for me. It's, it's, it doesn't fit. And this is the, this is a single stack Glock. It's, it's fairly thin. So uh, I don't use the tray. I use this exclusively just for a pistol and maybe a magazine to go with it. So uh, the tray is not anything that I need, but it comes with it if you would like it. It also comes, like I showed you, with this eggshell cushion that is removable. But with it in, my single stack Glock fits just fine. Okay, I wanted to show you what fits and what doesn't. And then even, this is a Glock 26, which is the small Glock, but it is also, it is thicker than my 48 because it is a double stack. It's the same width as the Glock 19 or the Glock 17. And again, it fits with no issue, even with the pad in. Now, I also have here, my Smith & Wesson Model 19, 357 Magnum, empty, empty, but it fits in even with the eggshell pad in, okay? So all of, all of those firearms fit. Now this one is the four inch barrel. I don't, it would not fit if it had a longer barrel. That's about the, that is about the limit that you will fit into this case. This is the LifePad 2.0. They make a one, a LifePod, excuse me, 2.0. They make a LifePod uh, without the 2.0 and it's slightly smaller. I don't know what of these would fit. I haven't, I don't have one. I haven't tried one. Um, so this, this is the case. As far as the technical specs go, it will, I'm not sure how many fingerprints you can put into it, but quite a few. So if you have two or three people that you want to have access to it, that's easy enough to set up. You can, of course, program different fingers. I have not done all 10. I did not think that would be necessary. I've done, you know, just one or two fingers off each hand. I felt like that would be plenty. Uh, it also, they say this, and I have not tested this, but it comes with these side latches that are supposed to make this um, waterproof. And I think pressure, I think it holds the pressure inside so that if it lands in the water, theoretically, number one, it won't leak. And number two, I think it's supposed to float. It is much lighter than this. This, this the gun vault one is, uh, is very heavy metal. This is not, this is, I think I think it's plastic. Um, I have not taken an ax to this to see how easy it would be to get into it. Um, I don't think that's really a major concern for my purpose. Like I said, I don't have it just for, I don't have it assuming somebody's gonna steal it. And that's the reason I'm trying to keep somebody from stealing the firearm. If a thief broke in, they could take this and. Sure, they could get into either one of these. This one might be easier to get into than that one. I, I, I don't know. It looks like it probably would be. But I think this is plenty sufficient for keeping my grandchildren and their friends out of the firearms. Um, so it fits nicely in the drawer. Um, I do keep these unlatched because that's just another step in the process of having to open the case. And it mentions doing that in the, in the uh, instructions. I don't really see the need for them. I'm not, it's, it's just not anything that I would wanna have to do if I did need to get into the fire, firearm quickly. All I have to do is, and it's opened, and then to lock it, is you lock it with the set, with the, with a little button there with a key lock on it, and then you can close those if you wish. You can also program in, 
there's a four digit keypad here four digit keypad and you can program in uh, a combination and that way if you wanted to give someone access to this and their fingerprint was not programmed in you could tell them the combination and they would be able to get into it just like this one worked um, it does come with a key um, to unlock it if the battery goes dead but unlike this one you cannot lock this one with the key so you you can get into it in an emergency but it's not made to be able to use like i did this one for for several months i just use this one with just the key um you can't do that with this because once you open it with the key you have to get a new battery in it and get it programmed like you want it for it to uh, the, the key will only unlock it. it it will not lock back with the key is what i'm trying to say so uh, that's that's about all i have to say about it it, it works very well for me to keep my block 48 in it I, I like the light it lets me see things if you wanted to turn the light off though you certainly could but i keep the glock 48 in there i keep it loaded most gun boxes we tell you do not store loaded firearm and then i ignore that to be honest with you i keep it loaded and i keep an extra magazine in there um, and i usually one in it and one in the box and that's all i all i try to keep in there uh, and for that it works very well i can even i can even keep this is this is my holster for this pistol i can even keep it holstered if i choose that will not fit with this one it will my 48 will and that's even snug with this holster and this pistol but that's not what what I use it for. But I just wanted you to know if you did want to use it that way, that that might not might not fit. So, LifePod 2.0. Very happy with it. Um, glad I purchased it. Like it very much, and I can recommend it. Thank you.